Hey everybody, call me Felix. And last time on our Boracay food trip, we had a second lunch at Boracay's Vanguard establishment for Filipino vegan and vegetarian delicacies, Noni's, situated by the Hugh Hotel in Station 3. For us carnivores, we were there for their renowned chicken and pork adobo, elevated with 72-hour cooked pork belly, heirloom rice, and garlic confit. If you missed out on any of the first three episodes of our Barakai food trip, feel free to click away on the Barakai food trip playlist on the far right hand corner. After our second lunch, we headed north to Puka Beach, one of the northernmost points of interest in Boracay, and in my opinion, as with many other opinions, Puka Beach is the best beach on the island. Typically offered as an island hopping trip stop and jammed with tourists during the late morning till afternoon hours, Puka Beach is best visited past sunrise or during the golden hour of sunset, which is about the time of day we visited and filmed the footage you're watching now. The further west you walk, you'll encounter less tourists, and potentially you could see the famed dramatic sunsets Boracay is known for. If you're an early riser, you could be rewarded with a walk or shallow swim to a hidden beach that becomes very difficult to maneuver towards at high tide. While we were there just one day before New Year's Eve 2021, the swells were, shall we say, kinda gnarly, man. And seeing how the waters off Puka Beach get very deep quickly, the farther you wade offshore, it wasn't the ideal time to be swimming. I'll publish a Barakai beach tour video eventually, but this just serves as a lead-in to what this video is really about. Once the sun set and we refreshed ourselves at our hotel, we headed down the main highway to one of Barakai's oldest running restaurants and one of the finest haunts for Spanish tapas and paella, Dos Mestizos, situated just off the main highway in Station 1, across from the Sea Wind Resort. As of this filming, this is the new home of this vaunted bastion of Filipino-Spanish heritage gastronomy. Having moved during the pandemic to this more visible spot along the main road so you can't miss it. When we got to Dos Mestizos, we were stunned by how lively and packed the restaurant was. And although our visit to Boracay was during the holidays, it was an encouraging sign that during the pandemic, Boracay was resurgent. This is the place not only to enjoy good food, but to celebrate. And indeed, we saw plenty of large groups celebrating and having a great time. But anyway, back to the food. We ordered a slew of tapas from platters of jamón serrano, manchego cheese, and pate to hearty classics of gambas, bacalao, callos, and salpicao de vaca. And of course, we couldn't leave Dos Mestizos without trying one of their paella dishes and to wash all our food down with sangria. The food and atmosphere required a special side of me to come out. You know, the one that dares to do Ricardo Montalban impressions while reviewing Dos Mestizos. Were the food, drink, and ambiance befitting of the debonair style and suaveness of a Ricardo Montalban? Well, here are my thoughts on the food. Well, take it away, Ricardo. Chickpeas. Squid stuffed with chopped egg, chili, garlic, tomato. When Ben is reading the tapas menu, it sounds like poetry. It sounds like Cervantes writing Don Quixote. I'm reading the English version of the Yes, you are. So for the rest of this review, we are in a restaurant called Dos Mestizos along the main road in Boracay. And for the rest of the review, I'm going to sound like Ricardo Montalban narrating everything that I try. I sound like Try of the Comic Dog instead. Right, Warren? No, he doesn't know. Ricardo Montalban. A very suave version of Ricardo Montalban, I might add. What have we here? Well, you cannot transport yourself to Spain. I know what I'm doing. Todo el mundo. I'm going to do this review. Something like Ricardo Montalban or something a bit like Triumph the Comic Dog. We are having a carafe of sangria. Even though in España, España, they don't really drink sangria. Yes. Ah. I can really taste the Rioja in that. It tastes a little bit of buttery as the it. How does a sangria warren taste like the very first one? Yeah, it's my first time to drink this one. Is this a it's liquor or wine? No, it is made out of vino. Typically made out of Rioja with mixed with brandy, some fruits. Oh. Yes, it is a, a very Spanish drink that many Spanish people do not even drink or imbibe. 
Because then, it doesn't taste good. Meat. Probably. No, it's because it's it, it has a very different regional so drinks, you see. In Catalonia, they drink vermouth. This is what non-Spanish people think that Spanish people drink. But I can vouch that Spanish people do not really drink sangria so at all. Spain, huh? Yes, I mean, España. People from Spain, people from Spain. And so, they give us some baguettes to munch on. But, the, uh, but, uh, but this bread is not from Spain, it's a French it's a, bread. Well, these are baguettes. French bread. No French bread. This one, right? In Spain, you don't have French bread in well, Spain. this is a Spanish <laughs> restaurant in Baracay that does serve yeah, baguettes bread. that you can dip in your That's olive oil. Baguettes. Baguette. Not, mm. not bucket. Not bucket, okay? It's baguette. Not bucket. 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 <laughs> Green thing. Ah, the finer things in life to have a baguette with some olive oil and some sangria. I feel very Spanish without feeling Spanish. Ah, to the El Mundo! Look at all the tapas actually. That's half of the tapas that have arrived. It's uh, presumably gambas a la hio. Yes. See? And then this is bacalao in tomato sauce. Huh? Why am I saying it in French? Oh, we got the Montalban. It says uh, house made chorizo, as you can see there. Huh? Oh, ensalada and pulpo. Yes. Oh, I said that in very Italian, huh? No, it's not Ricardo Montalban at all. Oh, this is the caos. And this is the salpicao, the baca. Where shall we go first? Oh, the chorizo. Um, okay, to the little mundo. Well, one really likes the char marks on the longanisa. Oh, sorry. This is the chorizo. Okay, I dropped the. <laughs> I'm dropping Ricardo Montalban. Yeah. Well, what do you think it would taste like if it looked like sausage? It is sausage. Well, it doesn't have that. It basically tastes like it's been reduced in red wine. Yeah. And I have a very hard time sounding as suave as Ricardo Montalban consistently, so I have to regather my thoughts as always. Enjoying food. It's really like savory. So kinda has like a nice pep some nice peppery notes. Um kinda get a little more salt at the end though. And it's lovely with that oil. No olive oil. Mm. Not bad. Next up, I'm going to try our gambas. Al ajillo. Place that there. And there we go. The shrimp. It's fresh and plump. Which is good. Just serve simply with the olive oil and then... Some garlic and a bit of tomato sauce. Quite nice. Let's shit it with like all of those Spanish peppers. Ooh, that have some good heat. Oh, it's the pate. Yeah, I really like the gambas. It got nice plump meat here. And then if you chase it with a pepper, even better. Add some. It has really good heat. This peppers here. Mm. And there we go. That chili really does complete everything. Look at those gambas. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna finish it off with an olive. Olive and some olive oil and some garlic. Yeah, very stri straightforward, isn't it? I'm gonna get the one with the garlic chip. Cousin Ben loves olives, so that's I mean it's very natural for him to want to order this. Hmm. 
it almost has like um, because of that mar that marinade almost has like a light cheese sort of taste a little vegetable back end and then that oiliness gives that that nice sheen these are really quite good too uh, where shall we go next oh bacalao this is some white codfish salted cod and tomato sauce did I get any of it? yes I did we got some potato here nice and soft without being mushy and then that codfish nice salt flavor running through the acidity of that tomato sauce quite nice this waits for no man this is basically some fat and pate ooh some oysters actually this can wait because the oysters are here coated in cheese bechamel and bits of jamon okay so be so ben what i learned about on our travels is that cousin ben baws like a sheep if the food is bad and he did that at noni's earlier today so that goes to show you that the ben scale of buying that um avoid at all costs according to ben but that's only according to ben you know but to ricardo montalban he does not need to buy like a sheep all he has to do is throw the wine in somebody's face and yes okay it's time to have ourselves a cheese oyster because cheese oysters don't wait for anybody okay mm. hey oh my god tabasco mm. you gotta eat that hot everyone Lovely oyster, but that bechamel sauce is really rich. <clears throat> that jamon adds an even, like a savory, salty edge. But salinity of the oysters kind of drowned out a little bit because of the richness of that bechamel. And the bacon. Bacon. Jamon. But really, really lovely though. <laughs> ben is still buying like a sheep. Wait, 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 it's good then? Even if you do, you bought like a sheep? What happens if you, what happens if you make, what happens, what happens, what, ha, what, what, what happens if you make goat noises? Does that mean it's good? <laughs> people have to look weird at us. I mean, we're the freaking indignified people that are here. How is that? But with the pepper, what do you think? Huh? It kind of tastes the same. Oh my gosh, Warren. And just as the others leave, before I can really annoy them, my Ricardo Montalban impression. I think we should put that in the middle. Because... I can take this. This is empty already. Thank you. Let me move it all here. So the only main course we got everybody is this. Mixed meat and seafood paella or what they call arroz valenciana. Now when I was growing up arroz valenciana just meant Filipino sweet paella but it's not sweet. Thank goodness. Okay, you can't let the paella uh, sit for too long. Yeah, you eat it fast. Yep, but there's some boiled egg, there's some shrimp. Yeah, put it in Yeah, put it up there, yeah. And then you get, you're given two paddle, two paddles to go um, rowing or to whip each other into shape on the posterior, right? On the gluteus maximus, right Ben? Boom! That's what you have. Initiation? Yeah, initiation. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah. That's it. Perfect, right there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, in the fraternity of Paella, so we'll be working there. Hang on. Do we like this? Yeah, mix it. No, you mix it. Wait. Okay, those delectable cheese oysters are gone. Half dozen. It went down so easy. It's creamy bechamel sauce. That jamon. And that really fresh oyster. Nice brininess. 
Perfect. So let us have some of this. What is this? Fat? Pork fat and duck pate? Or is it pork pate and duck fat? I don't know. It, all I know is that I love pate. And I would smear it on this lovely baguette that's been buttered already. Butter that toast with the pate. <laughs> so Warren's first Spanish paella. Come on. Do I need some spoon for this or a spoon for me? Yeah, you use your spoon for that. Just like a westerner would eat it. The way you wanted some chopsticks. But I can use my hands though. So the key, of course, to any paella is the bird stuff on the bottom. You have bird stuff on the bottom. Uh, the bird stuff is the best stuff. Thank you. Like I was saying, the burnt stuff right here, like that little crust there, yeah. that is the best part. And that's why you know your paella is really good, is if you have that signature crust on the bottom. Hey, I know what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> without having to resort to the Ricardo Mantalban. Yes. <laughs> oh, but I should say it instead. But the problem is I sound very French when I say it. Okay, try that out. I kind of feel like it's a little bit creamier, almost like a little bit of a um, mouthfeel that's kind of um, a little smooth, as if someone added a little coconut milk, although without the taste of it. I'm not sure how I feel about that. There's some pieces of chicken here that I see. One of those crusty bits. We have a piece of egg too. Oh, I forgot my lemon. Where are yeah, my manners? Put it around. <clears throat> yeah. Where are my manners, Ricardo Montalban? Yeah. There we go. Just a little spray of the lemon slice, as you can see. It's kind of like doing a palab, fancy palabo. <laughs> I think that lemon reminds me when you put it there. A bit of pancit palavo. <laughs> There's some green beans in here too. So the mussel is also plump and fresh. Um, I think everything put well put together with that paella, good ingredients. I don't know about that mouthfeel. And I don't know about like, there isn't that lack of that crust on that bottom, that signature. Unless, if there's any hope that I can find some on the bottom. The burned bits. Oh no. No burn bits. Taylor none. So that's kind of disappointing. <laughs> and again, the mouthfeel kind of feels like it had been. There's a little like coconut milk added without the coconut milk taste. Ah. Everything else is good about it. I just disagree with the mouthfeel. I disagree with the. Um, not having that lovely, lovely burnt crust on the bottom. Ah. Okay. I keep getting interrupted about my pate in fat. I don't remember if it was pork fat or pork pate in duck fat or whatever it is. Okay, so here it is the pork pate in duck fat. Or is it the pork fat in duck pate? Well, let's taste to find out. That is just smooth decadence. Mm. With no irony flavor, really there. Creamy, too. Yeah, it's lovely and on that buttered baguette. That is really good. Alright. Pate, excellent. Really good. Here. Pass me that salpicao over there. Oh, pass me the salpicao. Oh, there's cayos instead. Oh, let's do the cayos instead first. And once again, these are... I think these are beef feet. Thank you. With some garbanzo beans. And with a red wine base too. It's gonna be rich. Look at that meat. That's a proper 
cow's foot when I ever see a cow proper cow's foot. There you go. That's really a little too rich. I wish there was more of a tomato acidity to counterbalance the, the fats, the gelatinous bits. The garbanzos add only a little bit of tension, a little bit of to the dish. Otherwise, I kind of feel like it's just needs something to cut into. And I'm thinking more of a sharper tomato stew. Sharper tomato base. Next up, I'm going to try this salpical de vaca. One of the specialties here at Dos Mis Diesels. Mm. Yeah, there we go. The salpical. I don't know, it's more like a Filipino salpical. You know, with almost like adobo seasoning minus like the vinegar more of the garlic but yeah it's quite nice that beef is um kind of chewy in that nice sort of way like it's releasing more flavor but also because we let this cool a little bit um no Otherwise, pretty solid. Kayos is a little too rich for me. Okay, last but not least, and somehow this wound up last. Here's some jamon serrano. Although, it looks like it's in a bad state. It looks, doesn't look as like rosy red as I'm used to. But again, you got this nice buttered, buttered baguette. I'm gonna just like layer some on there. With the manchego. Ugh. A couple of slices of manchego. And then one must taste this with an olive. Oh, there you go. That's what it says on the tin. The tomato serrano lacks a little of that oiliness for me though. Manchego, nice, creamy. There's that wonderful, uh, really like so cheesy taste so I mean that's what it says on the tin common serrano eh iffy iffy and I know I'm gonna chase it with an olive that makes things better doesn't it okay I'm gonna wrap this up basically in a little bit and wrap this up in the Ricardo Matamban voice again Warren looks like he's dazed and cool boo okay back a bit and that about does it for this review of Dos Mestizos restaurant in Boracay. And I came away from that meal satisfied with the perception that Dos Mestizos is a quintessential stop on your food trip around Boracay. Most of the tapas were a hit with me and the one I raved most and I'm craving most here by my desk are the oysters smothered with cheese, bechamel, sauce, and jamon. They were super fresh oysters, presumably locally sourced from Aklan, mild and not too briny, and well appointed with luscious cheese and the right dose of saltiness from the ham. Order a bunch of these oysters and be happy. I'd definitely love to come back to try the squid ink paella and reserve a cochinillo or roast suckling pig a day or two in advance, as Dos Mestizos is also known for their suckling pig. Next time on our Barakai food trip, it's New Year's Eve and our luck walking into highly crowded restaurants without a reservation run out. And so we spent some of our lunchtime walking down the sugary smooth white sands of Station 1 Famished on White Beach. And until it hit me that the last resort I stayed in on my last trip to Barakai served pretty awesome food. We landed a seat at this restaurant at the five-star resort I stayed in last time in Barakai, and its in-house restaurant isn't quite as highly clamored as some of the signature spots on the island. Did I uncover a hidden gem? or a restaurant that needs more publicizing? Well, stay tuned for the next installment of our Barakai food trip, and I'll show you a neat beachside bar with a good vibe to hang out for your next trip to Barakai. And so if you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button as it really helps a lot. Better yet, please subscribe so that you don't miss any new food and travel videos from me. And until the next time, keep cool but care. And remember, the empire never ended.